All right, we're here at my Burmy Hut indoor worm bin. And the last time we were in here, we put in some big hairy carrots along with some other food. But check it out, worms all over the surface. And I run into that a lot with my Burmy Hut because it has a lid that has some condensation on it that kind of drips back down. So let's go ahead and get this newspaper off and kind of try and get the worms off it. And then we'll start digging in and see how our last feeding went and then get started with our next feeding. So right here in the center, there's just a little bits of pieces of newspaper and that's because I feed right in that center so I expect there to be more worm activity. We'll just kind of brush it off and see if we can get down into the feeding zone. Now, along with those kind of large hairy carrots we also had some lettuce stalks and peppers, some sprouts, some broccoli stalks, a piece of watermelon, a half moldy lemon, and a big red rotten pepper. So let's go ahead and check that out. Now this this looks like the top of some kind of gourd or something. I kind of forgot what this might have been attached to but we'll see as we go in if there's anything else under here and I'm seeing worms right away right in the center and it's been 11 days so that's right about the time where they probably eat most of the food but there might be some remnants Now we did put some avocado shells from last feeding there was a big old worm ball in there and then we hollowed it out dumped the worms out and it looks like some more have decided to come in but we also have some of the bedding and castings in there here's one of those pieces of carrots so we had those carrots and we put them in the freezer and then we put them in whole and when you do that if you leave the carrots whole they end up being a little bit more of a long-term food than if you had chopped them up so that makes sense for what we're seeing here we dig under see if there's anything else right there and <laughs> lots of great worms as I'm digging up this bin has both red wigglers and blue worms and that kind of mix does really well here in Florida even though I'm indoors this is uh, oh this is the lemon okay so it looks like they've eaten most of the inside of the lemon out and this is the peel so 11 days with a half of lemon that was frozen and uh, just a little bit moldy and you can see they did a pretty good job with it I should smell it. I can't. It, sm it smells good. All right. More worms and not sure what this is. Peel of some sort, but I'm pretty impressed so far. I've expected to see more of those carrots. This is the mango that we have been checking up on and updating and a bunch of worms inside there just kind of hiding out. So we'll keep that going. Eventually they'll get down and break down this part of the mango seed. We'll keep working this way. I think we had maybe another avocado shell there also. And let's see if they managed to burrow back in it. With, even though there wasn't any flesh in it. Sure enough, check it out. Lots of worms in there. For some reason, they just love going into those avocados, so much so that I've started calling them avocados. And this right here is the stem of another pumpkin or gourd that we had put in. All right, I think we might have put some of those carrots on the side of the feeding, and this is crazy. I really thought that there would be more of those carrots here. What had happened was my mom had put the carrots in the refrigerator, and she was gone for a while, and they started to grow just a little bit. And there you go, check it out. This is one of the remaining carrots, and the worms are really taking care of it. They are all over it. Clearly, they enjoy it. And I think freezing the food before you put in really helps with the breakdown and helps the worms be able to get to it and eat eat it quicker. Certainly that and the microbes. So let me dig around the rest and kind of aerate whatever we have left and then we'll come in with our next feeding. I think that stem is like a stem from a pepper. So the executive producer says this is probably the stem from a pepper and I would tend to agree with her. I think that she is probably right. One of the things I'm also noticing is that there are just lots of worms up here. This top tray was put up here about 32 days ago. So in another 30 days or so it's going to go underneath and be the next pre-harvest tray and then 60 days after that it will get harvested again but you can see lots of great castings they're making they're doing a great job with the, the fresh shredded cardboard that I put in here as well it's always good to agree with the executive producer even if she's wrong uh depends on what she's wrong about but yes even when she's wrong but you're not really wrong all that often oh here's another here's another long piece of carrot man they were pretty chunky when we put them in and they are definitely shrunken down and the worms hanging on for dear life there. It smells good. Yeah, it smells great. Love putting a little bit of citrus in. All right, so we'll go ahead and line this with a little bit of fresh shredded cardboard. And in we go with some more shredded cardboard. So here's what we had in mind to feed them. And I'm not going to feed this whole thing. It's a pretty big container, but we'll pick out some good stuff here. I don't think I've given them a banana peel in a while, so we'll start with that. In fact, I found a whole banana. So let's go ahead and open this up without juicing it all over the place. But this is 
is just kind of an overripe banana we threw in the freezer, so it's ready to eat. And the worms are absolutely going to love that. Now, banana has some alcohol in it. So if they don't eat all this, we'll actually have kind of the smell of alcohol in here. Then we'll put in a couple of apple cores. Always got to go in with some fresh lettuce stalks. And then I always find strawberries to be a really good worm favorite. Add a little bit more lettuce. And these stalks, I put three in there. Those will be the first thing that they eat. These are mostly water, and I really find that they attack them pretty quickly. Put in some more strawberries. And then check it out. The executive producer was exactly right. This is probably what this used to look like. So we'll add that in there. And then we'll top it off with some forbidden food. We've got a little piece of onion and that may take a little bit longer, but it is okay to feed forbidden fruits like that lemon or this onion in small quantities. And I lied. We're going to put an avocado in there because <laughs> I like to see the worms gather inside. And usually what I like to do is I like to put some of this old food in the bottom of all this, but I totally forgot the executive producer reminded me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of bury it in these two sides real quick. All right, there we go. Now, now we're set up. One of the things I'm going to do is kind of wipe off my hands here and then we'll put this kind of right on top of the food there. So now I'm just going to add in my usual worm chow with expired grains from my pantry that I just pulverize. And then we'll go in with a little bit of the used coffee and tea grounds from our morning coffee. And both of those things are just ways for me to get some of the used food into the garden and through the worms without having to throw it away and it adds nutrition to the garden which I appreciate and so does this eggshell grit which is just pulverized eggshells that the worms also use in their gizzard. Now I'll just top it off with a little bit more shredded cardboard. So it was important to add bedding and a lot of things that I see say about three times the volume of bedding as the volume of food and I've been doing that for a while and it's worked out pretty well. I'm also trying to bulk it up. The worms are going to eat both the food and this bedding. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to push it down here here, and we're going to go ahead and bury it up. And as we're doing this, we're putting a little bit of worms right on top, but that's all right. All this food in here, and especially the bedding, is going to get more and more moist. The food certainly has moisture in it, but because this vermi hut has a lid, all the moisture that's in here is going to recirculate. And the good thing about it is if there's too much moisture, it's going to go drain through the layers that I have below it. And if it was way too much, it would go in the basin. But the way I rotate the bins prevents me from getting any of it at all down down in the basin. So if you want to check out a video on how to rotate, I'll put a link right here. So I think this is going to be a great feeding for them. We're going to go ahead and check on them in another 10 to 14 days, see how they did with that. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing well. So happy from a composting, everybody. Take care now. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot to put the newspaper on. So let's do this right now, just like that. And we are definitely going to need another newspaper by the next feeding. All right, there we go. Now y'all can have a great day.